Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes and I'm here with the brand new hangover of a brand new model from Auto Trail, which is the Expedition 68. First of all, I'd like to pop, point out that this roof is a five and a half grand option. If your model isn't specified with a pop top roof, you will just get the standard model that's just got the standard flat roof on the Decato there. Okay. So starting the walk around on the driver's side of the vehicle first, the first point you get to is your mains connection point. So this is where you hook it up with the hooker blade provided with the vehicle. So you get a hooker blade, lift the collar, expose the end, lift the flap on the vehicle and hook the vehicle up first. Always hook the vehicle up first, then the power source so you're never walking around with a live lead. And then when you come to unhook, there's a small blue clip in the left hand corner you push down to release the hooker blade. Just below, you've got a blue and a grey tap. Grey's waste, blue's fresh. These are your drain down points. So you'd pull over a motorhome service bay on the way out of your site. Open the grey, which is the dirty water. So this is anything you've drained down a plug hole. Dishes water, sink water, uh, shower water. And next to it, the blue one is your fresh drain. So if you've taken on contaminated water, you're draining down for the season or you're simply not using the van for a while you would just open up and drain the vehicle off it's very important that you drain these two in the winter as you wouldn't want the water to freeze in the tanks as it's very expensive to repair or replace the tanks next up you've got your cassette loo so this is your toilet so using the habitation key which is the little round key you'd open the door there push both catches in to release the door there's a little green clip underneath so that'll pull the cassette out but make sure the blades close first otherwise the cassette won't move which is on the bottom ball of the toilet which I'll show you when we're inside the vehicle so pull the cassette out we've got a handle here so you can drag it to your site facility for emptying which is normally beside your toilet block and then what you would do is you would remove the cap, press the green button, allows a bit of air in, stops it glugging, tip it out. Once you've tipped it out, it's normally a tap there, put some water in, give it a rinse, tip out again. Then if you're using the chemical form, 120 ml of either the green or the blue chemical into here and it's good to go back into the vehicle. If you were using the tablets, Put a pint of water in and then push the vehicle push the cassette back into the vehicle and put a tablet down through the toilet you do have a header tank on this model so this is where your flush comes from so you can fill this up with your pink liquid so pink so much pink and then dilute with water and then this is your system so when you flush you'll get a nice fragrant smell to clean the bowl or you can just put plain water in it's up to you coming further around you've got your high level brake light and then opening the back doors on this new model it's quite good if you're into biking or outdoor activities as you've got two slide out ramps here and these are great for storing your bike so you'll notice you can get there's two holes there, there are four um, bike fork mounts, so you can bolt them through, take your front wheel off your bike, clip it in, and then store the wheel in the back. And then you've got another slide out rack there, which you just need to drill through for another bike, or you can have it for any other equipment. Your gas bottle is in the back, it's LPG, it opens with a south core key, so it's this key here. And you just put it in turn lift the door off you can fit two six kilogram bottles in there and to connect the pigtail to the bottle it's a left hand thread so opposite threads with gas you'd hand tighten it and then you turn the bottle on and off from the top of the bottle always make sure it's turned off before you start traveling 
and always make sure that the bottle is securely fastened in and then you do have a space for a spare bottle as well so you can carry two six kilogram propane gas bottles and then you just put the door back on and use the key to lock the door back up got some storage racks some storage above and obviously you do have this net here so this cover to protect the bed which just pops on and off but you do have a zip in there as well so you can still look out of the back windows and use the windows to open with blackout blinds and fly screens on Coming round Coming round to the passenger side of the vehicle To fill the vehicle with fresh water Using the habitation kit again you've got a lockable fresh water cap so what I'd advise is you go and get a hose pipe, a collapsible one or a standard hose pipe and some hose pipe connections. Pop your hose pipe into here, either wait until the water starts flowing out, which means it's full because it's coming out the overflow, or you can look on the main control panel on board to see how much water is on the vehicle at any one time. At the passenger door, using the main ignition key you've got your diesel filler and below because it's a new styled euro 6d compliant diesel engine it does have the add blue which is a 19 litre tank it'll tell you on the dash when it needs add blue as soon as it does please top it up otherwise you can risk getting faults and the vehicle going in limp mode and not starting but you can buy the ad blue either in the drums from your local car factors or on the pump like the HGVs from most petrol stations and that's 19 litres to fill the ad blue. Opening the passenger door you've got your tyre pressure so five and a half bar which is 79.5 psi. Your engine battery is underneath the floor so underneath the carb mat that just lifts up underneath that cover is where the main engine battery lives. And then you've got your bonnet release on the side of the dashboard. So have a quick look underneath the bonnet. You've got screen wash. This cover lifts off and you can fill your radiator, coolant and brake fluid. Engine oil, there is no dipstick on this. It's digital, so it's through the dashboard earth putting your key in behind the passenger headlight lifting this cover up this is yeah positive for giving or receiving a jump start you've got your paint code for the exhibition grey which is 676 and your weight plate now as it's had a secondary stage conversion it's no longer a career van a cargo van it's now a motorhome so it's three and a half ton if you were to put a tow bar on you can tow up to six ton and you've got your front and back axle weights you do have central locking on all the doors as it's a van conversion it's just the expedition range on the coach belts that don't have the central locking on the habitation door but the van conversions do so please ignore that when i talk about the cab because it's a generic cab from the coach built model so once inside the vehicle above the habitation sliding cargo door you've got your main 12 volt control panel so if you're hooked up, you will have mains power, 240 volt. If not, you will just have 12 volt off your leisure battery. So you've got your master switch in the top left hand corner, which turns the motorhome on and off, 12 volt or 240. And below, you've got the master switch for your lights, which are all then individually switched around the vehicle. At the bottom, you've got your pump. So turning the pump on will pressurise the water, but only turn the pump on should you have enough water in the tank, which I'll show you how to find out how much water you've got in your tank in a moment. Top one's an owner light, but the Expedition range isn't fitted with an owner light, so you don't really need to worry about this top right hand switch. Clicking the, the levels here, it'll run through the 
control panel. So it's a Sargent EC362 control panel. If you click again, it tells you how many volts are in the leisure battery. Click again, it'll tell you how many volts is in the vehicle battery. And then one final click and you do have your water tank levels. So you're fresh, 25% zero waste. You then, it says select battery, battery equals leisure. You always want the motorhome to be running off the leisure battery. You never really want it to be running off the vehicle battery. So always make sure that says leisure in capital letters. You've got the time, so to adjust the time, you just adjust it here and press enter to change the time. And then you're back to the beginning. So to heat the water and the vehicle, your heating is wheel heat air. So this is the new control panel. So you just wave your hand over them and they'll become active. You've got heating and you've got water. So starting with the heating plus and the minus obviously increases the temperature the first little dot looks like a snowflake and that is the frost start which is five degrees next one is nighttime mode so it looks like a moon and this is 16 degrees and then you've got your temperature so in the middle is somewhere around 15 degrees and then all the way at the top is 30 degrees you've got two buttons on the bottom so you've got a gas flame blue indicates the gas is on standby give that 30 seconds and the gas will then go to orange the the flame and that means that the gas is primed through the system and it's operating on gas and then this side you've got electric so you've got three dots so you just click and hold one dot is 750 watts Got new orange there, so it's pulling the electric through. Two dots is 1500 watts, which is equivalent to a kilowatt and a half. And then three dots is three kilowatts. Should you get an exclamation mark down here, which means the system's failed or there's a glitch, you do have reset buttons on both of them. So that's the heating, the hot water. Again, you've got frost start. 40 degrees of heating your water or all the way and you've got 60 degrees gas blue means it's on standby give it 30 seconds it'll go to orange like this one has which means it's lit on gas and you do have on the electric you've got one dot 750 watts two dots 1500 watts and three dots three kilowatts there is no temperature of the fan speed so you can't adjust the fan speed it all works on the temperature so if you stop if you're heating it to full the fans will be a lot louder than if you're heating it from say 20 degrees to 30 degrees the fans will be a lot quieter because it's regulated on the temperature and then finally if you just turn it off Allow the fans to fall silent before you would turn the main panel off. And like I said, you've got two reset buttons underneath so you can reset the panel should you get a red exclamation mark. And then you just wave your hands over them and the motion sensitive. Operate your fridge. So your fridge is a Fetford 12 volt compression fridge. So you can turn it on and off here by pressing and holding. It's gone off, press and hold again. It'll come back on and you can go up and down with the temperature according to what you've got in. So when you're pre-chilling, you probably want it on five. When you get your shopping in, you probably want it on three or four, the max. And then you do have the nighttime setting on the moon. So you can turn that on and off by just clicking and that'll just lower the decibels of the fridge. Got a decent sized fridge. And then when winter rises in the vehicle, it's very important that you look after the fridge as well. So you would take all your remaining items out the fridge. You'd give it a wipe out with some antibacterial wipes or spray. And then what you want to do is you want to leave the door open ajar to stop that clean air becoming mouldy, smelly air. So there's a little blue clip. If you pull it out slightly and just rest the door against it, you'll notice the door's not flush. It's just resting up. 
so it allows an air circulation in the top and the bottom so that the fridge doesn't grow mold in there when you leave the door shut so just rest it up and that will be good until you come to reuse the motorhome in the springtime underneath the fridge you do have storage drawers in this model so you've got four large storage drawers and a well three large drawers and a cupboard underneath you've got your back bed with your little ladder clips on to there so that'll just clip on to the rail here you've got access to the double bed at the back storage on this side individual reading lights which just operate off a switch and you'll notice you've got a twin USB point there some storage wardrobe with hanging rail but these shelves are removable so you can lift the shelves off if you don't want them and you can hang your clothing in there and then on the other side you've just got no hanging rail but some storage shelves and a fire extinguisher like I was saying at the back of the van you do have this panel here so you can open this up during the day and you can set out the back of the vehicle and open the windows in the summer for ventilation same with this window but you've got a little press stud cover to go on that on an evening in the washroom you've got your shower curtain which is clips on via a press stud and then clips back on this plastic clip so you can keep the shower curtain all together toilet roll rail and some toiletry holders to operate your toilet you'd ensure that the pump was on press the blue button and you'll get your flush if there was any flush in the header tank so you'd flush first to lubricate the seal on the blade and then open the blade using this white handle Use the toilet, everything will go into the cassette, flush after use, and then close the cassette. If you had the cassette in the open position and you try to get it out, it'll not move. It's got to be closed for the cassette to come out the exterior of the vehicle. This will come on with a red light when the cassette is full. That's just indicating that it's full and it's now time to take it to the disposal point, empty it, give it a clean out and top it up with chemical. You've got your hand basin sink, which also acts as your shower. So pull it out and that'll clip on there. And there is your shower. And like I was saying when winterizing, if you just undo the two, pull it out and lie the hose just down like that. Any water in here will coil out via the waste on the shower tray. And then that, I'll just slide back in. down the neck of the tap and act as your hand basin tap. You've got a heater here as well in the washroom so if you didn't want the heat to come into the washroom you can close it, you can leave it open and this little space because it's a smaller space on the van it gets really warm so if you've got any wet coats or anything try and hang them up off here or off there and they'll dry in no time. Underneath the back bed you do have access to your garage space so if it's raining outside and you don't want to get wet you can climb through into the garage it's a four berth with the pop top if you don't get the pop top model it is just a two berth but you do carry four people because it comes with the half dinette so this table just folds up you do have to make sure that that driver's seat isn't as far back. 
so it would just fold up like so you can use it up when traveling and then when you want it down just push the table a little further up pull this slightly out over the other bar and it will fold back down and clip onto the wall if you've got the pop top you've got another set of ladders to clip onto here you can climb up into the pop top you've got a window this side a fly screen that side but you do have covers for them reading lights so two settings bright and then a brighter setting two USB so there's USBs on either side of these so you can charge four devices up here and you do have a handy safety rail so if you're putting children up there that would clip up onto there onto here and stop them from rolling out but it is quite a big space up here So if you have got the pop top on your Expedition 68, to pop it down, what you need to do is, if you just open the door ever so slight to allow the pressure out, it'll mean pulling the roof isn't as hard. Get the centre strap, pull it down, pull it down so far, and then what you want to do is just pull the sides of the canvas in, the front, you want to make sure that it's pulled all in and then you can do the final pull and pull it down and then what you would do is pull it all in pull it down chuck this canvas back up out the way and then Put these turnbuckle onto here, turn the turnbuckle and push it up. Do exactly the same on the other side. So, so turnbuckle, so put onto the locating pin, which is this here, turn it and push it back. Then you've got a seatbelt system so you can connect the buckle onto there. Tighten the strap up. So it acts as a secondary safety catch. Same with this one. And that is your roof nice and secure. Underneath the extra two traveling seats in the back, you can lift this up. And this is the location of your leisure battery and your battery fuse in there and you've got a bit of storage this side or if you wanted a secondary bat battery fitted it would be fitted in here on the front of the rear traveling seats in the expedition c in the expedition 68 sorry you do have your ec176 power supply unit so you've got a system shutdown button here so if you didn't want a battery drain in the winter you can just press that and it'll turn everything off You've got all your 12 volt fuses which are listed, the amperage and what fuse does what down here. And you've got your RCD and your MCBs this side, so if you trip the vehicle out, you try here before you try your main site. And then these are the crossover fuses, so this is the EM40 unit interface, so it's the fuses that cross over with the vehicle. So you've got two spare, you've got your marker lights and your fridge. You've got your towing, if you were to fit a tow bar, these are your tow bar fuses, or, or one of them. And then you've got your battery fuse for the vehicle, and another fridge fuse. And then on the Expedition, van conversion range, ignore the car blinds on the coach built model, which I'll insert as the next clip. So I'll show you your blinds, which are slightly different than the newer style ones. So on both passenger and driver's door, you have your blinds. So you pull them up and then you'd locate this pin in here into the groove in the frame. 
and then you would slide the windscreen blind up from the bottom and not the sides and exactly the same for the driver's door so now in the cab which is based on the all new Fiat Ducato Series 8 so it gets a new design dashboard new design door cards lighter steering wheel and digital clocks so starting off via the right hand side of the driver's seat this is where the handbrake is and then on the doors to black them out you do have Remus car blinds which is an option on the expeditions so if you press and slide so pinch it with your thumb and your finger that'll black the driver and passenger doors out and then if you do the same on the windscreen meet in the middle they are just magnetic and that will black your cab out on the top of the door card on the driver's door you do have your electric windows driver and passenger and mirrors so you've got two mirrors each side so you've got the top and the bottom being the blind spot headlight adjustment you've got an eco button there so that just saves a bit of fuel so you can pop that on or pop that off and that'll tell you if eco connected eco disconnected on the clock there and then you do have your rear fog lights and then if you want to turn off your start stop you can disable that from here as well wipers lights and indicators your cruise control is now on the steering wheel on the series 8 so you've got cruise control and it'll say cruise control ready and then you would just set by plus and minus should you have to cancel it you can cancel it here without touching the brake and then resume and then you can speed up and slow down via the plus and the minus or you can press limiter and it'll say cruise control off speed limiter ready and then you can set that and it'll in the bottom corner it'll say lim lim and then you would just turn up your speed limiter to the speed you want to set it to on this side of the steering wheel this will go through your trip computer so it'll tell you your range so how much fuel you've got left to empty and the miles per gallon that the vehicle is doing that's on one if you go to page two it'll tell you your miles per gallon so that's your instant miles per gallon the other one is your combined miles per gallon you've got your because it doesn't have a dipstick it's got a digital oil reader for your level it'll tell you oil level and then if you use the two side buttons you can scroll through this one so you've got your oil level your oil temperature your oil life your battery level for your engine battery your add blue level and your service but please remember that that 28,795 mile that's shown now isn't until the motorhome needs serviced. The motorhome needs serviced yearly. So every year, first year an oil and filter, and every second year a major service where all the filters are replaced in line with Auto Trail's warranty because a motorhome doesn't cover 28,000 in a year like a career van would. Then you can go to if there's any alerts on the next page by scrolling down and then you've got all your vehicle setups you've got your display your clocks your language your security so passenger airbag speed beep if you go over a certain speed limit the buzzer volume you can, and your lights your courtesy lights so when locking it you can set the lights to stay on for to go off immediately stay on for 30 seconds 60 seconds or 90 seconds and then your doors and locks you can have the auto lock facility where once you go over a certain speed i think it's like once you get in the second gear over 10 mile an hour the doors will lock on the cab you can have them off or on if you want that 
and then you can have your when you unlock the vehicle if you want the lights to flash which is automatically set if you don't you can turn that off but that's all in there which is all explained in the handbooks with the vehicle six speed manual gearbox with lift the collar into reverse down here you've got your heated mirrors your hazard lights locks the doors which is just the cab turns your traction control off and turns it back on so e anti-skid control ESC on the outside ring you put your temperature on the inside ring you put your fan speed on at least one or more for the aircon to work which is this button here which brings on the white light on the outside ring on this side you've got your distribution so where you want your air to be circulated to and whether you recirculate in there within the vehicle or you're bringing fresh air in cup holders so you've got two in the front one in the door pockets for a bottle and then some handy little storage cubbies there USB for charging so you've got a USB C and a normal USB and a 12 volt glove box heated and cooled glove box via the air conditioning on the top of the driver's dashboard or should I say passenger dashboard and then you've got two USBs in here if your model is fitted with the Xcent head unit so this is the Xcent head unit So you've got radio, which is FM, Apple CarPlay, which is where you would connect through here if you've got an Apple iPhone. It will imitate the screen onto there so you can use Apple Maps, Google Maps, um, Waves, and that will project it onto the screen. And you can also play your music and various other bits and pieces through there, Spotify, Apple Music. DAB, so you've got DAB radio there, go to the list and you can find them all and then you can press 6 to save your favourite channels. Going back to home which is the top button on the left hand corner, you forget about the camera because the expedition's on fitted with the cameras. You've got USB, so should it, because it doesn't take a CD, if you were wanting to put some a lot of CDs onto a big USB stick, Again, you can plug it into the USBs that are fitted into the top glove box on the passenger side. SD card, again, you can fit, put onto an SD card if you wish, and you can put it into a micro SD, which goes on the top right. Bluetooth, you can connect your phone, so you want to be searching at the same time as this is searching on your phone, and it'll come up with the name of your phone on here, and you just press pair. You'll get a notification on your device. It'll say accent wanting to pair, make sure pins match, press pair, and then it'll ask you if you want to download your phone book. Just press allow, and that will sync all of your contacts into here, so then you'll be able to press keypad, contacts, call log, that'll all be saved. But if you wanted to use Bluetooth music, you'd have to go on the phone and press the music icon, which is in the bottom right, for that to start working. got your volume here and then you've got your shortcuts to your favorite camera obviously there's no camera fitted but you could wire a camera to this should you wish and um, as it will be camera ready as it's got the camera software on there and then above the head unit paper clip or if you pull this lever here so a lot of people struggle with these all you need to do is get it from the back it's plastic, give it a pull. Don't be afraid to pull it too hard. Pull the lever out, pop your device in there, and then close the lever and that'll lock the jaws so it locks your device in there. And then the door just folds back neatly.